Hi guys, this is Deep Rock Galactic 44 Tips and Tricks Full Release. In this video, you will learn a ton of useful tips and tricks for green beards as well as for veteran players. I will start with beginner tips and then go to casual tips and finally expert tips. So stick until the end of the video if you want to know the best ones. Let's go. Let's start with beginner's tips. Number one, use your mule for height advantage. This might be a very simple trick, but can be handy when you don't want to mine your way through the wall. Number two, every time you see a loot box, make sure to kill it. It will drop some gold as well as some nitra. Three, when you're joining a mission, take a look at your team composition before picking your favorite dwarf. If a team has three scouts, they might not need another one. They might need an NG, so pick a dwarf that is missing from the team to work together in the most efficient way. Number 4, another tip that people forget about. Pull out your laser pointer to check how many minerals your team has or spot where your team is through the walls in case you get lost. Number 5, this is a very basic tip but worth knowing. Not only these dwarves are awesome at jumping, but they can pull themselves on ledges as well. Hold the spacebar to pull yourself on the ledge and don't waste time building a perfect staircase. Number 6. For the love of rock and stone, when you or your team calls resupply, don't take two resupplies. There are four dwarves, there are four supplies in resupply, so take one, not or don't be that dwarf. Number 7. Very fun but mostly useless tip is that you can ride the mule back to the dropship. This might be challenging at times, but it is way better than running back. Number 8. Very obvious tip, but I have to say it because so many green beards just focus on the main objective. Harvest all resources and plants. The main reason you are going into any mission is for resources and gold. Main objective is actually a mandatory side quest. Your main quest in every single mission is to get as many of unique resources as possible. Number 9. Now it brings me to another tip. When primary objective is complete, don't run to the mule and call in the drop pot. Don't be that dwarf. When you complete the main objective, you can still go out and find those unique resources. Communicate with your team when you're ready to finish the mission first. Number 10. Press left control to pull up your pointer. Use it for everything. Ping resource on the wall that you cannot get to so a scout can collect it for you. Use it to ping an enemy that you want the team to be aware of, like leechers or spitballers. Use it when you find a patch of dirt that you or team needs to dig through. Ping everything. Number 11. Make sure to pick up all plants during your missions. You can use them in an abyss bar to unlock new beers that will give you buffs for your next mission, like increase your maximum health, lower your pickaxe power attack cooldown and reduce fall damage there is many more number 12 a tip regarding servers you can see how many missions are active depending on how many rockets each biome shows to the right of the mission number 13 a lot of players forget to use x to notify your team that you found a way to a new area got grabbed by a leech or just need to be revived. Remember, if you're playing solo, use X to order Bosco to drop whatever he's doing and save you from a leech or just revive you. Number 14. Remember, when holding large minerals, you can hold left mouse button to charge and throw it further. This is extremely useful when you're doing point extraction missions, so use it. Number 14. When you start the game, the first instinct that you will have is to do all the missions to get as much resources and money as possible to buy yourself a pink beard, which is awesome. But remember to do at least some assignments to progress through the game, open new weapons, trading and promote your dwarves. 
Number 16, most of the enemies have weak spots. A rule of thumb, it is either their head, their abdomen, or glowing part of the bug. If you want the entire list, I will leave a wiki page where they go over every single bug in the description down below. These were my beginner's tips, let's go to casual tips. 17. Use gunner ziplines to defeat swarms with ease. Go back and forward on the zipline and remember to focus on flying or ranged enemies because they are the only ones who can harm you. Number 18. Dirt tunnels. Make sure to dig them wide and easy to get through. Most likely you will use this tunnel when running back to the drop pod while a swarm is behind you. Getting stuck and going down is the last thing you want to do when you're about to finish the mission. 19. Remember that all assignments can be done with any class at any difficulty except an assignment to unlock Hazard 5 that requires you to play on Hazard 4. If you choose a Hazard lower than 4 for this assignment, it will not count, so be aware of that. 20. A suggestion rather than a tip. Instead of using quick join, try using server lists to find missions. Not only you can see what mission type, hazard level, complexity and length, but you can also see how long this mission has lasted. If it says NA, that means that the host is still on the space rig. You can also see what dwarves are present on the mission and which ones are missing. So next time you want to join a mission, use server lists. 21. You can write custom messages on server listings. To do that, press escape, go to options, then gameplay and write whatever you want as your game server name. Twenty-two. The worst enemy? Cave leeches, of course. However, did you know you can hear them? They hiss before they grab you, so listen for them. If that is not enough, look up and try to see anything that glows. Yes, they will glow when they try to grab you as well. 23. When mining large resources like Anor Pearls, turn off your flashlight to help you see mineral glow in the walls. This will help you to find them and save you a ton of time. 24. On the other hand, when you mine mineral sticks, just destroy the bottom part and the rest will come down. Usually you need 2-3 to three hits to get the entire stick to save yourself some time. 25. Steve. Steve is a nice bug. Don't shoot Steve. Don't explode Steve. Pet Steve. If you didn't know, there is a perk called Beastmaster that allows a dwarf to befriend a bug. It will fight for your team, so don't try shooting him. You can spot Steve by the blueish glow around him, that means he is friendly. 26. Very quick tip if you like to play duo. The best combo, in my opinion, is Angie and Scout. Angie puts a platform on the walls where resources are, and Scout uses his grappling hook together. Try it out, you will not regret it. 27. During egg hunt missions, a very good idea is to use your 3D map to find eggs. No matter how far the egg is, you will be able to see it on the map. 28. After promoting your first dwarf, you will be able to go on deep dive missions. For new players, this is 3-in-1 mission that gives you high-end upgrades for weapons, utilities or cosmetics. Remember that there are no unique resources on those missions, so don't waste your time trying to find them. Those missions are basically speed runs because the main reward is after completing each stage. 29. Get used to using your pickaxe to kill small and medium bugs, especially when they are alone and not in the swarm. Later in the game, ammo shortage is what makes these missions challenging even for veterans. Getting in the habit of using your melee to save ammo is a must. 30. Another tip regarding melee is to use power attacks. This is an upgrade for your pickaxe on any dwarf and I cannot stress enough how extremely useful it is. 
It can kill most of the medium sized bugs in one hit. It can kill loot bugs in one hit and it just has a cooldown of only 30 seconds. Imagine killing a bug every 30 seconds with one hit and no ammo. In my opinion it should be one of the first upgrades you should buy. To use it press right mouse button and then left mouse button straight away. 31. There are many environmental hazards in each different biome and I hate electro crystals the most. You can actually destroy them. It does take quite a few shots but if you hate them as much as I do you will not care. 32. Another quick tip, Morkite and Nitra only give XP. Let's imagine you have completed your primary objective and searching for resources or random spawns. Well, don't waste your time on collecting more Nitra or Morkite since they will only give XP at the end of the mission. I suggest spending time on searching for resources or calling in a drop pod to get to another mission if you have collected all the resources in this one. 33. When you do call in a drop pod, look at your 3D map right away. You can actually see a green drop pod even before it shows you a marker where it is. Extremely useful tip for drillers because they can start drilling right away. 34. You run out of bullets, grenades and steves. A swarm is approaching and you only have nitra. Know that resupply does damage if it lands on a dwarf or any bug. 35. I think I have died more times because of the fall damage rather than bugs, so this tip is for my fellow suicidal dwarfs. Jumping on a friend's head will avoid all fall damage, so either find some friends or join my Discord channel in the description down below so we can help each other. Now this is the moment you've been waiting for, let's finish this video with expert tips. Number 36. Use a miner's guide or a map to find which region has which resources and know how they look like in each mission. Some missions can have an abundance of a specific resource while others have scarce of the same resources. For example, you need Kropa. Well, you can go to Magma Core where you can find it but it is scarce or you can go to Fungus Bogs where Kropa is in abundance. Number 37. Different mission types spawn bugs in different ways. Mining missions like Morkites spawn hordes just depending on the time. Egg Hunt missions have a chance to spawn a swarm or a wave every time you remove an egg from the wall. Salvage missions start a timer every time you put a leg or repair a mule, after which it will spawn a large swarm. Point extraction missions spawn swarms over time, but compared to mining mission swarms in these missions, they will increase in size every time. Elimination missions have no swarms, but have large waves. Deep dive missions have a combination depending on the two objectives that you have. Number 38. A very good tip that a lot of people miss even after playing for over 100 hours in this game. While upgrading equipment you can see milestones on the bottom right. Every milestone will give you a reward of some sort. When you upgrade your armor, it will actually give you permanent 5 health after every 3 upgrades. So make sure to buy all the upgrades even if you don't use them to get those 15 free health. 39. When you drink beer and go on a deep dive or lead deep dive, a buff from a beer will last all 3 missions. So make sure to get drunk with your fellow dwarves. Number 40. Most likely you already know that you have to mine dirt to get to a new area. But did you know that you can open your 3D map just before you start digging to know which direction to mine? This will save you a ton of time mining left, right and center to find your way to a new area. Number 41. During any mission there are three types of random spawns. First one is Cargo Crate, 16% spawn chance. 
This will spawn a crate and two batteries within 30 meter radius. You have to find those batteries, insert them in the crate and repair it. This will reward you with resources as well as a victory pose or skins for weapons. Second random spawn is Lost Pack. You can find a helmet like this one lying around in caves. Hold E to extract coordinates from it. Then open your map and find a dot on the map. Most likely it will be in a sealed room that you have to dig through. Upon entering the room you will be able to collect some resources as well as a Lost Pack that will reward you with a random pickaxe customization piece. The last one and the most complicated one is Machine Events. These are four random quests that can spawn and in order to activate them you have to have a key that you receive upon promoting at least one dwarf. I will link all three pages in the description down below for Cargo Crates, Lost Pack and Machine Events so you can read about them in more details. Number 42. I was skeptical of Driller when I started to play this game, but he makes surviving swarms extremely easy. When you get notified that the swarm is coming, make a tunnel in the wall and just camp there 300 style. 43. I was told this after I've played over 70 hours in this game. You can actually zoom in or out on your 3D map. Last and my final tip is Rock and Stone Brother. Start of the mission, found something, killed a bug, killed by a bug, Thank you very much guys for watching, what tip do you know that I don't? Please write any other tips in the comment section down below and I will give you a heart so green beards can join our ranks. Thank you very much, bye bye.